Hey everyone, welcome back to Bowtech Live. It is Thursday, our Tech Talk edition with Mr. Rod Doggett. Welcome back, buddy. How you Thank been? You. Good to be back. I've been all right. You've been all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Staying out of trouble for the last week, I would yeah, hope. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, being hard to do. Yeah. But, you know. I know, seven days in there, I'm sure it's pretty difficult uh, <laughs> for you. Yeah to yeah. make it that long so I know there was a couple times over the weekend you know I was a little worried I might have to come bail you out somewhere so <laughs> over the weekend so what uh, anything new and exciting going on uh, getting closer to hunting season oh man I hear that I hear that speaking of hunting guys make sure you get all your questions in to Rod's here Rod's got his bow in front of him so we have a lot of questions that came in uh, over the last week since we last saw Mr. Dog um, so we're going to use his bow as an example, but get your questions in because I am watching here on Facebook. We're going to do a quick reload. I am watching on Instagram, so you can go ahead and get those in because uh, Rod will do his best to answer those. So as we reload here, we're just going to double check. Um, yeah, it looks like we are live on Facebook. Great, so everything's working again. Yeah. You didn't break anything today. So. <laughs> Not yet. Man, we were just talking before we came on the air. It's uh, almost time for school to let out here <laughs> in, uh, in good old Oregon. A couple of the, the smaller schools are out, but... And Rod, you were, you were kind of talking about you do not look forward to this time of year. No, every summer break. Somebody's got to break into my car or <laughs> jump the fence, look in the back windows or something. Yeah. So it's yeah. every summer. So. That's what Rod said. If you if you want anything stolen, wait till the summer break and <laughs> you're good to go. Yeah, so. They don't like it in the winter time. They're not out and about. So, you know. <laughs> it's too cold to go be yeah. too cold to be hoodlums. Cold and wet. <laughs> hard, hard to steal stuff with an umbrella. <laughs> you can't get away with it. <laughs> Rod's probably tried. You sound like a man of experience. Been there, done that, <laughs> or tried it anyhow. Yeah, really. So well, let's hit a couple of questions. We have a lot of people coming in here too. Uh, Randy, Mr. Geekoff's checking us out oh, again. Hey, Randy. Hey, Randy. Good to see you again, or good to see you joining us again. So, um, Dan Howard's in there, the man oh, himself, Randy. Dan Howard. He's always in watching you, so it's great stuff. We have a lot got of good questions too. He does. He generally yeah. has some good stuff. Dan, you just hopefully you got your hat. If uh, shoot us a picture if you if you got your hat that we sent you out. We I like to like to share that with everybody there too. Um, that was a nice hat. It was a nice hat. I think it's one of a kind. It is. It is. It's pre-shaped and everything else. <laughs> Hopefully your head's the size of rods. So. <laughs> well, let's hit a couple questions that uh, we received over the last week. A um, couple good ones. Um, Cody Abelman is asking, how do you tell which flip disc goes on the top? I got to be careful how I say flip disc <coughs> because I've slipped and said the wrong thing a couple times. You should do our training. If my boss is watching, he probably remembers <laughs> that. It was not good because it was in front of about 50 dealers in our Botech <laughs> University. And I said the, another thing other than flip disc. So I have to make sure I emphasize flip disc every time I say it. So how do you tell which flip disc goes on top and which goes on the bottom? Or does it even matter? Yeah, it matters extremely. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bad things happen. Yeah, you got a comfort and performance side too. That matters. You can't yep. have them offset. You mm -hmm. can't have a comfort and a performance. But uh, the flip discs actually do have a mark on them. There will be a T for the top and a B for the bottom. So. Right. Pretty easy. T and B. Yeah. Can't go wrong there. So if you're the other way around, that it might definitely be affects things. Yeah, it does. It does. Does it matter if it's a left-handed bow? Uh, no. Curveball. Threw him a curveball. It didn't work. Ah, uh, good. Good question. I love it. I love it. Um, Timothy Joseph Glom is asking, I've had my rain for over a year. Would new strings benefit me this summer before the fall hunt starts? Um, if it's still tuned timed and you're not getting fuzzies and everything's looking good, you're laser tuned, hey, uh, you probably get another year out of it. Yep. So. No, no one, Tim is, uh, Timothy Joseph Glom, he's pretty hard on his stuff. Um, he goes pretty hardcore when he hunts and, and anything he does. So he probably needs a new string it's, cable yeah, on he's there. Probably, if he shoots a lot, he's yeah. probably needing one. So. Yeah, he's uh, pretty hardcore there. So um, good question, though. We get that one quite a bit. Uh, let's see. Man, they're coming in crazy already for you, man. They love you. They love you here. Um, how do both, uh, Jed LaFleur, I think Jed's joined us a couple times. Yeah, Carrie well, says yeah. hello, by the way. Hello again, <laughs> Carrie. Uh, Jed LaFleur is asking, how do Bowtech custom made strings compare to other brands? That's a great question because that can lead to a lot of good and bad things on aftermarket. So, um, the good thing about our strings on our bows is we make sure everything's in factory specs on tolerance. Yep. Right? 
That's big. Serving tolerances mm -hmm. are very important, especially mm -hmm. in the mod tracks. I mean, if you're <clears throat> going over the VF post, if it's too thick, you're automatically going to, even if it's the sure. right length, it's automatically going to act like right. your, your bow's hot. So the VF post is right here on the cam. I don't know if we can catch that on our other, whoops. Oh, your bow almost hit the you floor, dog. You almost scratched my bow. Our AV guy's running <laughs> over there to try to catch us pretty quick. So the VF post is right up in here on the cam. We're going to give him a little time to catch it, catch us. There you go. So actually the VF came from the Insanity, right? Insanity had the V and the F on yep. it. But it's the same thing. So Always um, over the top with the cable, by the way. Yeah, bad things happen if you don't. Um, I've done it. Rod's <laughs> probably done it. I know. We'll, we'll admit actually, it. Actually, I never have. Never have. Well, you're, you're pretty detailed. I've seen guy, it a hundred so. times. <laughs> um, so that's a lot of cause of some bows that come in here is because they're not <laughs> strung properly. So that's a big thing. He, when he talks about the VF post, that is that area right there. So if go ahead. If your servings are oversized, it's automatically going to act uh, tighter. Right. Even if your cables are the right length, it's going to act tighter going over that because it's sure. too thick. So your, your cams will automatically come out hot just by stringing it. Right. So, um, yeah. so that's a big thing, what you see when a bow comes in that's, that a lot of people say they can't tune the bow. Yeah. And generally, I know a customer service take the call and the first thing, did you just have your strings and cables changed? Usually yeah. that's... I mean, we don't have a problem with people going to non-factory sure. string cables, but as long as they're in our tolerances, right? because right. five thousandths on that serving diameter makes a big difference. Yep. Yep, you're going to be chasing string and ca or yeah. uh, axle to axle and brace heights and yeah. everything. That's, uh, that's a great question, though, too. Um, Brian Caston, do you know Brian Caston at all? I don't think so. Well, Brian likes your haircut anyhow. He oh, says, nice thanks. haircut, dog. It's due for another one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Corey Ross, this is more of an accessory question, but it's a good question. Is there truly a benefit to running a dovetail sight bar, putting the, the sight bar far out in front? Yeah, um, the farther out in front, front of your bow it is, the mm -hmm. closer your pins get together. Sure. So when it comes to gapping pins, say mm -hmm. you're using a five pin sight, mm -hmm. it would hamper me to have it out farther because right. it's already starbursting on my mm -hmm. eyes. Mm -hmm. But if you can pick out each pin individually, right. uh, as far as yardage guessing goes, it yeah. takes some of that game out. Sure. So. And it helps us kind of like a rifle a little bit too because that's why you see longer target rifles and, and you mm -hmm. benefit by a longer you know sight plane. You see competitive pistols have a longer sight, sight distance there because Short, you you can move it around a little bit more. Yep. So the same thing holds true. It acts a lot faster. Yep. 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 So same thing. Good question though. Um, uh, I've, even, I've even seen people with their sights put on backwards where they're clear back here by the cables. Interesting. Yeah. Purposely. Yep. <laughs> uh, Dan Howard is asking, what arrows do you use when when we are testing for IBO? Uh, five grains per pound. So if you got a 60 pound bow, you're going to shoot a 300 grain arrow. A 70 pound bow is 350. A 80 pound bow is 400. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. IBO regulations is a five grains per pound. So <clears throat> 62 pounds, you're going to have to have a 310 grain arrow minimum. Right. For speed tests. So. Mm -hmm. That gives you kind of an even playing field. I mean, that's yeah. the big thing there. Um, man, we got some great stuff coming. Let's pop over to Instagram here really quick and see if we have anything. I got to get uh, caught up a little bit here with them. A lot of people watching though. Uh, Dana Jones just rocked a monster turkey with the Rain 6. Love All the right. Bowtech. Love it. Send some pics. I want to share that stuff. Send it on my way. Um, I sent you one. You didn't post it. <laughs> <laughs> we did need to post that picture. I keep. I was going to do it last week. Um, of course, I don't get to put in for that special thing we got going either. I, so well, you know. tried, and I was looking at. We talked about this before we went on air. Now. Unfortunately, let's talk about that here pretty quick. Um, we do something cool, and Rod had the honor of of announcing this last week, but uh, has to do with. What's the, this animal behind us? What do we have going on, Rod? It's a big old branch antler, Rocky Mountain elk right yep, there. Yep. So. What are we doing with elk right now? I mean, what 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 is Bowtech doing right we now? We are going to sponsor an all-expense-paid 
you need nothing except yeah. yourself. Yourself, yeah. In yep. Colorado. In Colorado, man. Yeah. It's, I saw, I was checking the entries because, you know, we, we kind of see when they're coming in. And I saw this guy and it said Rodney Dage. <laughs> and it, I look at it and I'm like, all right, you know, Rodney. He said he was going to try it and I caught it, but... Uh, no such I could have used Pierre in the front. Pierre Dodge, no, I would have gone. No. <laughs> U.S. and Canadian residents only, unless you're, you oh, know, yeah. French Canadian, maybe. I'm not from Quebec. So. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Rod makes a good point. We are giving away an all expense, all expense paid hunt to Colorado to whack an elk. I mean, you can't go wrong there if you mm -hmm. if you have ever hunted elk, or if you're new at hunting elk. This is a great opportunity to go out with our own uh, Nate Zelinsky. And we're going to make it super, super easy for you. All you need to do is text HUNT to 77453. I know Rod really didn't un enter because he still hasn't figured out how to do this. HUNT to <laughs> Couldn't get into it. So One time he texted it straight to me, 77453. I'm like, no, 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 Rod, that's not how you do it. So make it easy. Text HUNT to 77453. Or you can go to the Botec website. There's a cool banner there. Click on it. Take you right in there. It's a pretty cool quiz we're going to give you in there. It's to kind of gauge and see how much you really know about hunting. You get in there, answer a few cool questions. It doesn't matter if you're wrong or right. Um, we're just going to have a little fun with everybody and kind of see what uh, what everybody is. And it's good for you, you know, kind of get in there right yeah. or wrong. But again, right or wrong, doesn't matter. You're, you're entered to win. So you can enter it now. Um, we're going to be going through August 10th. So make sure you get those in through August 10th. You must be 18 to enter. So you're 17, Rod, so you probably couldn't yeah. enter anyhow. Yeah. So. Um, not quite old enough. Maybe someday you'll be old enough Mine's to enter. About so. four. Um, Rod <laughs> mentioned Quebec. U.S. Canadian residents only. Sorry, Quebec. For some reason, you got some crazy rules that don't let you enter these these sweepstakes. So we'll give you free airfare, lodging, food, guided hunt, license, etc. Just we'll get you there. Basically, bring a set of clothes. I'm sure we could probably work out some clothes for you, some hunting gear, um, and we'll get you free bow and accessories. That's a good Maybe. one, too. That's a good one. That's, that's a deal there. So, also, we're going to be filming it. So, pretty good deal be able to join us all of our cool content we're going to be doing. So, make sure you text HUNT to 77453. If you want to learn more about elk, you can join us tonight because Randy Newberg is at 7 p.m. Pacific time here. So, to get ready for this, uh, this sweepstakes, I'd watch him because he's going to teach you a ton about elk hunting more than I could ever hope to learn with uh, Randy. Is, I've learned a lot so far. So 7 p.m. Pacific time, you can get in there and, uh, and check uh, check Randy out to learn a little bit before you try to win this hunt. So back to Doggett. I know we get excited about elk hunting a little <laughs> yeah. bit. 60, so 67, it was 66 days 66 last Thursday. Last so 50. going quick. Nine, yeah. Close. It's getting close. I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, man, we got questions rolling in for you. Kevin Wilson, I have a question for Rod. I hope... He's got a question for you. That's good. Can I change the cams on my RPM 360 with a cam from a rain or equivalent um, only to try to change the draw system? No, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's kind of tough. Yeah, and you got different limb deflections. That's a major limb deflection change. Yeah, so yep. yeah it wouldn't work out. Yeah, I mean, is that you're, by the time... Real, if it could be done, and by the time you bought all the components, it's a new bow at that point. And plus, if you did something like that and you have a registered bow, you voided all warranty on it. So, Yeah. Carrie wants to know if you got a new shirt and where's your hat? No, this hit. Hat's in the room sitting <laughs> with my glasses, by the way. <laughs> so he's reading for me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. He, he can't see right now. Uh, Tim Greger, after you paper tune the Bowtech Fanatic, should I walk back tune and move the rest accordingly or continue to adjust cam lean? Good question. Uh, after you've paper tuned your bow, don't touch your arrow rest. Yeah, I mean, That's don't it. mess with that. No, it's done. And then uh, your string, <coughs> if it's laser tuned to the paper tune, your string should be centered in your riser mm -hmm. when you're done. Mm -hmm. So. And that's really, really what you're doing. I mean, because you can do it in paper as well, fine tune. But same thing with walk back tuning. You adjust that cam lean. You're just if you're yeah. having a problem as you get farther back, you're finding that. Well, here's the deal: at 20 yards, people are shooting at a spot yep. this big, and if they're in that spot, they think they're sighted in. Yep. But in reality, if you look at 30 arrows that you've just shot, they're all basically on the right side. And now you step back to 30, yep. and you're that far out to the right. Mm -hmm. And then you go back to 40, you're that far out to the mm -hmm. right. So the farther you get back, 
the more it shows you. Yep. So, yep. But you got to make sure you have your site access on too. And you got to have your second and third <laughs> access set right. on your site. So there's a lot of things that people, you know. Hopefully you've set your access before you went through all this. <laughs> this rigmarole of trying to tune it, you get your walk back tuned in, not to have your axis. If you got it tuned and laser, laser tuned and timed, and your arrow rest yep. is already set, it's your site. Right. So. Right. And once you, you know, after even with the overdrive binary cam system, after you get that 20 and 30 fine tune as you go back, you're going to start to see stuff really. You're not going to have to really, from my experience, tweak a lot of that cam lean as you move back because you've already fine yeah. fine tuned that that travel position. I took my Prodigy out earlier today and I haven't shot it in a year, and I walked out back, hadn't even I put a sight on it last night, right? Because you know I don't have my limbs yet. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rod. This is Rod's bow, by the way. He, he's a. Uh, He's a little under poundage, so he we had to get her cranked up to 90 pounds. So we need no, no. <laughs> we're heading to Africa <laughs> before no. we. Uh, yeah, you need it for that help in Colorado, right? Uh, Rod doesn't even weigh 90 pounds, I don't think. So we uh, we were joking before we came on yeah. here, but <laughs> but something cool next week. Um, we actually talked about this before we came on air. We thought it'd be pretty neat to do. So during our uh, Tech Talk with Dog next week, next Thursday, so we'll go 3 p.m. Pacific time again, Rod is going to take you through the full setup of his bow. He's going to basically start to finish. He's going to set it up for himself and walk you through the whole thing. Well, I've and, shot this bow, but as you can see, all it has is a hostage arrow yep, rest on it, yep. which is probably not what I'm going to go with. I would so, so. You're a little more advanced, right? <laughs> I will put that in my pack. Yeah, that's that's your backup rest that's we talked my about backup last week. Rest, but I like it. Uh, yeah, I'll bring all my good stuff. Yeah, put, on, put it on there. We'll so. do that. We'll get you set up. Get your your draw length, your cam lean. We'll get everything. We'll go through the tuning process and walk them through it. So it's good that way. And that way you're good to go. You get an opportunity on the clock to uh, be able to set up your uh, bow. And can't beat that. Can't <laughs> well, beat let's that. Get, we got a lot of good questions still coming in. Um, Brian Caston. Um, Good question. Um, I can't, I, a little subjective, probably. Um, how about a good all-around elk setup? Hmm. That can go pretty deep, I think. <laughs> yeah. Deep. Um, I don't know if you're shooting 60, 70 pounds. Uh, I hunt 60 pounds with elk with no problems, but mm -hmm. I don't take a shot. I've never taken a shot over 45 yards on one. Right. And it was standing there eating for 20 minutes, not moving, perfectly broadside. So uh, if you put an arrow in the right spot, I mean, you can you can hunt them with, it's legal to hunt here in Oregon with a 50 pound bow. Right, so, for elk, yep. Yeah, so a 50 pound bow will blow right through that mm -hmm. elk right there. Mm -hmm. I said, I shot a 60 last year and it was a good size spike. And the only reason it stopped is he was just quartering away a hair and it stopped in his shoulder. Cool. Just caught the bottom of his shoulder blade and it buried it. But, man, that was on my rain six. So. Yeah, so you, I mean, set up for elk. Yeah, you can, you can set up a lot of different, yeah. you yeah. got options. <laughs> Bows are so efficient anymore. You can get away with lower poundage, not yeah. kill your back yeah. and, and kill most big game out there with lower poundage. Yeah. Good question though. Women are doing it all the time. <laughs> Uh, Jillian Dillaway, what do you recommend for arrow tips when hunting elk? I know you have your favorite go-to <laughs> arrow tip for hunting elk. Yeah. For hunting everything, I think. Yeah, I use it on turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> the, tur the turkey head lopper offer. Uh, I like the solid steel kudus cut from tip to back. Mm -hmm. uh, it cuts going in and it cuts coming back out. Yep. It's a, just a two-bladed Indian type style mm -hmm. broadhead, but they're very efficient. Right. Very efficient. And they fly great. So. Yep. Locally and made broadhead. And so. I shoot 125 grain arrow. My or tip. Tip. Yep. My arrows weigh quite a bit for my draw length. Mm -hmm. I got it slowed down pretty good. Yeah. But, but you're shooting a destroyer, right? Yeah. Where you're shooting, you're getting the Royal Mex going now too, so you're going to have some good speed. And yeah. Same speed pretty much almost. Still got the kinetic energy. Yep. So. Yep. Um, that's a good question. Dan Howard, we are still trying to figure out when we're going to get our shoot off in here. I know we've been both pretty <laughs> busy, so spring spring is here. We got sunshine. Yeah, finally the weather's rolling in, going to cooperate, so we need to get that worked out. Yeah. Nolan and I were actually just talking about that the other day. Um, I think we need to catch it when uh, Jeff Suter, the marketing director, is in because he wanted to come out and kind of 
be the commentator for us. So. I think it's for burgers or something. Like yeah, we need to do or something. Or we need to come up with something. <laughs> Definitely for food. I mean, it's pretty much that I'm buying because I haven't shot in a while. <laughs> so, um, David Lee Miller is asking about when the clutch grips are available. I think we had a couple other folks ask about that. So, we're probably going to be looking late fall um, at those this at this point. We we're kind of tweaking some different options we wanted to give everybody, maybe some colors and things like that. Um, and we wanted to make sure we had all that available before we came to market with it. So we should have them here pretty Hopefully quick, before so. Christmas, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that would be good. It'd be good stocking stuff for her. Um, I see a lot of questions coming in on, on Instagram. It's the same questions about new bows for 2019. Um, yeah. I would love to share. I know Rod would love to share, <laughs> but we love our jobs here, yeah. um, so we are sworn to secrecy. But yeah. uh, keep checking back; you might see some cool teasers coming out in the next I, couple I months. I got in so. trouble for that uh, back in 2002. That was you for just mentioning a pocket that we were coming out with. So it was great. Was that, was that the sand trap limb pocket? <laughs> the sand trap technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was a good. That was pretty advanced in its day. A little box of sand, but it worked. It worked. It worked. Cool. I still got them coming in every once in a while. So you got in trouble, with John Strassheim? Is that who you got in trouble with? <laughs> yeah. Give you the stubby yeah. finger yeah, in the didn't chest. Like, he didn't like that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know better because I was I was talking to one of our local dealers. So yep. I figured he knew. No, nope, he didn't know. <laughs> Those of you, if, if any of the Strassheims are, are watching, I mean, if hey. anybody knows John Strassheim, uh, <laughs> he's got a had a short little stubby. Had a little injury back in the day, uh, pointer finger. Yeah. And generally, if you were the recipient of the, the stubby finger in the chest, you're in pretty deep <laughs> poo. <Yeah. laughs> then very rarely use the stubby finger. He was finger. all right, though. He was okay. Yeah, great, great guy. We love him. We love him. Gave us our star rate. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's go back to our, our ones we were sent in here. Um, Sammy Bartley. How much does the how much does a change in the ambient temperature affects the affect the performance of bow of a bow? Um, depends on what your bow's made of, pretty much. I mean, if you got uh, glued laminated type limbs and your risers made out of steel, aluminum, carbon, uh, temperature changes will affect a lot. Of well, oh yeah, so. definitely. Matter of fact, I didn't take a bow to uh, Reading that one year because it was 106 degrees. Yep. And they knew it was going to affect something. So Especially Reading because you can go from hot to shade to rain. <laughs> rain so hard you can't see the target yeah, at 20 yards, literally. So no matter whose bow it is, what company's bow it is, it it's going to affect a bow. Yeah. So. That's one thing about being a competitive archer, though. You need to be able to react to those changes. Well, yeah, if you shoot a lot of tournaments and stuff, and you shoot the same bow, mm -hmm. when you get there, you should probably recite your bow oh, absolutely. to that climate. I mean, elevation change. If we go yep. from the valley down here where the, the air is heavy mm -hmm. and wet, mm -hmm. and you go up to the high plains over there, right on the other side of the Cascades, you're probably going to have to uh, move your sight higher because mm -hmm. you're going to hit high. Yep. Yep, that makes sense. It definitely makes sense. Randy says he still has his Pro 38 from that time. Yeah, he really. Yep. Single One of can. my favorite bows. Yeah. yeah, man, that was, I think, the, actually, Pro 38. I had one earlier, so I had the Black Knight when it first came out. But Pro 38 was my first one as we transitioned into kind of the mm -hmm. sand trap technology. That was my... I just stuck with the Black Knights because it was fast. It was fast. You like the fast. I still got one. My white tail in my office in there I killed with my Pro 38. So that's uh, that was pretty cool. My first Ohio buck. Um, let's Randy, see it's time to upgrade, though. Yeah, I know. I think so. <laughs> we got some stuff that would... Uh, <laughs> Be much better than that Pro 38. At least come in and shoot them. You're local here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we know a guy. <laughs> uh, we kind of talked about this one on the air a little bit. Um, let's see. Where is it at? Oh, um, Cody. No, Mike Earl. Um, I've been trying to adjust my carbon night to my draw at 26 and a half. I have it on position nine and post nine. There seems to be no let off. Please, exclamation, help. Carbon night or help. carbon icon? I uh, saying carbon night. Carbon, carbon night. night. Basically, it's the same thing. If you got your uh, <coughs> top and bottom mods switched. Just like that question we had got? Yeah, you're yep. going to have a real big problem. And yep. it, it definitely is going to affect your let off and your draw cycle and it, everything. So you got to yep. make sure that's right. Mm -hmm. 
And then, uh, <clears throat> like an icon has a rotating mod that you can actually uh, put your mm -hmm. your screw in the num right numbered hole. Right. Except for there's an extra s screw hole in that mod itself where yep. you could actually over rotate it and put it in the wrong right. hole. You've so. seen that on the on the icon a lot on the night. I mean. As you get short, sometimes you see just a little differences because you're generally not going to have the same holding weight let off at 26 and a half as you would at 29. Right. You know, you probably just need a little cam position adjustment, I would guess. Uh, yeah. Um, if you advance your, well, if you're right-handed, mm -hmm. if you advance your top cam just a couple of twists in the cable farther than your bottom cam, right. it'll, it'll usually give you, create a little bit more let off, so. Right. If you go too far, there's chances of it locking up. Yeah, remember, there's always a trickle effect. That's one thing we always talk about in even in, in product development is the trickle effect because if you change one thing, generally there's something downstream that it can change. So if you over-rotate your cams too much um, or advance your cams too much, you can over-rotate them and start wearing cables yeah. and things like that. But if you're, depending on where you're at on your let off, um, it may not take a, a ton of adjustment, yeah. but just, just be aware of that. So. Rod doesn't figure, want to have to work on your bow later. You can figure 80% minimal on that carbon knight is your let off. Yeah, so yep. if it's a 60 pound bow, you shouldn't be holding any more than 12 pounds. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if it's not, it's holding 14, say, or 15 pounds. Right. It probably is only going to take maybe two more twists right. in that top can, in that cable, to achieve that. So Good point. Have your dealer do it. That's yep. a big thing. Your, Have your, your timing so. marks on, on a bow, if you're going by that, um, is not going to be exactly the same. So right. if that, that could be a problem too. If he's looking at his timing marks and got to make sure they're exactly the same, then it's not going to be right. Good point. Good point. Yeah, I mean, because the dimensions and the, the geometry of the bow. Yeah, the distance that. from here to here is yep. different from here to here. Yep. So. Well, here's a good question. And actually, somebody asked this question in the last week and also somebody just asked the same question in, in a similar manner so um i got them all kind of jumbled together here where is it at oh okay so caleb magoon is asking can you explain how to yoke tune my rain seven maybe in include a step-by-step -step link to instruction so <laughs> we'll, we'll put that something like that together for you but rod can go over it here today for you as well and the same thing on Instagram, so RHO3SHEE -E is asking how important is it to set cam lean with a laser? Both my cams are leaning to the left of the bow. Looks excessive, question mark. So maybe they're wanting you to know if it's excessive, so. Laser tune's pretty important when you get started mm -hmm. and then you need to shoot. And uh, I do this before I put a peep in. I shoot it 50 to 100 times. Oh, good point. And then uh, I'll laser tune it again and it's usually settles in and stays right there. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yoke tuning is very important with the laser right. when you're starting out on these bows. Mm -hmm. So give them a quick run through of how you would check the, the, the laser position on your Romex here. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we can get, uh, get some camera shots here. a I good angle? We can uh, move some stuff around here a little bit if we need to. All right. Let me come around here. I think Rod go out front. <laughs> <laughs> Close ups. <laughs> <laughs> no, get back behind the table, Rod. No. <laughs> now they can see how short you really are. <laughs> I'm really not walking that way. <laughs> okay. This cam has a hub on it, <clears throat> raised hub on the mod side. So this laser, Spot Hog laser, is going to sit right flat on that hub. And this laser should hit that bearing on the top, right, where am I at? There right it there. Is. There it is. So it might be kind of hard to catch on camera, but he's hitting right in Let's there. Let's get it in there. See if I get it back a little farther. Maybe oh, there you go. Yeah, she's showing up pretty good in there. The way. There it is. Yep. Yep, they can see it right in there. It's looking good. Right there. So it should hit that bearing. Would have been easier on mm -hmm. this side right here because... Uh, String stop rods in the way oh, on the bottom. And this is a starting point rod, so let's say you So would. I'm going to hit that bearing right there. It's right on it. See oh, that? Oh, there you go. 
Okay, that's the <clears throat> that's for the realm and the realm X. Um, Again, these are starting points, so you're probably yes. going to have to adjust from here. But so, this is to get you set equally. Right, you get that set, and then you'll you'll center up your arrow rest. I'll go back around here. <laughs> Once you get your uh, laser tuned, then you'll set your arrow rest and get that adjusted properly. <clears throat> then you'll shoot through paper, and you might get a left hair just a hair or a right hair just a hair, and if at that point you're going to adjust bus cables a half a twist at a time. Mm -hmm. Don't move your arrow rest. You already set that. Yep, that's so, important. That's important. We're square to the bone. The only reason you would have to do that is because my hand is different than his hand and my grip is different than his grip. So when I go to that bearing, I usually get a perfect hole through paper where we already did this on a show before. Right, right. I got a different. hole through paper, handed the bow to him, and he got a right hand Yep, there. I did. Yep. So we yep. had to readjust the bow for him to shoot it. So it's not, it's minor adjustments. Though. Right. And that's the nice thing about this because you can fine tune the bow to each individual person. So it's basically, it's like a line in your car. You don't have to, by moving the rest is basically the same thing as you're going down the road. Let's say you're drifting one way, you're cranking the wheel to the left to compensate for it. Your alignment's all jacked off, but you know, jacked up, but now, but now you've got to crank it to the left or the yeah. right. To where now what you're doing is your, your front end's already square, and we're just fine tuning the travel of that down the road and making it go perfectly straight, putting all that behind the air. I just realized I said jacked off instead of jacked up. So <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those Try, days. Trying to get in trouble with I got boss flip disc right, then I say that when we're gone. <laughs> but uh, so that, that's what you can do, you know, and we're the only company that can do that with, yeah. the, you know, fine tune that. You might be able, other companies might be able to do it just on the top or yeah. just on the bottom, or they can adjust them, but they won't stay. So gives you the ability to fine tune it from Rod to myself because he may hold it just a little differently too. So, um, Dan, uh, I'm sorry, Dan Howard is asking, are you unveiling a bow in July like you used to do? Dan, I don't ever remember unveiling one in July. I mean, got the not, ATA show. Yeah, generally we, we go fall or ATA show, but I don't ever remember July, so no. Yeah. Nope, no sense. <laughs> um, I see we got some good stuff coming in here. Oh, Dan Howard. He's always got good questions for yeah. you, Rod. And this is a good one. Should the string stop be touching the string? Yep, it should. How much should it be touching the string? Um, you just want contact. You don't want it. You don't want your string to be like bent up or anything. It, right. it should just be touching and it's definitely centered in that groove. Right. Needs to be centered. That's yeah. a good good point too. That's yeah. a good point. You I can't think have it offset because if it slaps onto the side of that thing, then it does this. Right. So you could do all the cam lean, lean tuning in the world you wanted to do, but if that's if that's kicking your string, yeah, definitely. it's all for naught. Then you're gonna get arrow flay on it. Yep. So. Makes sense. It's a good point. Good point. So double check that. Um, and like Rod said, I mean, generally you don't want a gap. You'll get the slap. I've seen them come in pushed way out. I've actually had. Bows I've sent out for like media editor writers and everything else. And good good uh, point here is if you turn the limb poundage down, you need to adjust that. Yeah. Too, correct. Yeah. I've seen a lot. They will, and even if it's turned down, they adjust it out. They crank it back up again. Bloop! It's pushing yeah, out on that string again. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Makes a big difference in yeah. performance. So good question though. Man, Dan Howard, you got a good memory. Carbon Night was in July. I don't remember that, but I'm not going to doubt you. If you remember that, <laughs> you know, great, great on you. He got the Samson thing on my head. He hat, does. He so. probably knows. So he did. Yeah, I think he answered the Samson. You're right. <laughs> but uh, so he, I'm not doubting you at all, Dan. You're probably on it with that. So. <laughs> Um, and we got some, let me check one more here. Looks like everybody's tuned in. They're probably sitting down eating a cheeseburger watching you. We've got a lot of people watching, Rod. Um, one more question here from, okay. Uh, Michael Davidson. My dad currently shoots the Rain 7 and I shoot the Realm X. We make our own bow strings and I was wondering what string material and strand, strand count you would recommend, and what is the best serving material would be for end servings and center servings? Well, it's a good question because it, it follows up our one earlier about making them correctly. So any insight there for, uh, for Michael? Um, depends <clears throat> on the material you're using, but uh, you still want the same diameter when mm -hmm. you're done. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <coughs> I mean, generally, we use 452X. 452X, yep. yep. And uh, halo servings. What, yep. So. I mean, as long as it comes out the right length, the right yep. diameters, and 
capable of adjusting adjustments on everything. All right. So you really, depending on your material, you're going to have to compare. I mean, look at your 452X. I know they're great online as far as BCY is publishing their specs. If you're not using 452X, but I do highly recommend that. Mm. You know, I've, whenever I've built my own in the past, I use that. But you, know, you got to make sure. I believe the we got 22 strands is that on great? this one. Yep. Yes. Yep. 22 strands. A little more on the fanatic, yep. just because it's a target bow. So. But uh, no, that's all great questions on there. But uh, Rod, I know you have to run today. You have a visitor come in that uh, did some damage to his bow. At a yeah, tournament, his uh, bow got hurt this last yeah. weekend, so he's from Canada. He's from Canada. So eh? He's got a long drive ahead of him. But stop going to have a cold brew with you, right? <laughs> eh? Eh? <laughs> he's going to stop gonna here on his way, and I got to fix his bow. So okay, well that's great that he uh, wanted to make sure he came by and had you fix it. I mean, yeah. it's a good opportunity right here. But uh, I know we we're kind of talking and watching the time so I didn't want to keep you but I appreciate you joining us again hey, and, and it's all fun. sharing the wealth so next week make sure you join us again the same same place same bat channel this three o'clock thing time. seems to work a little it bit it does better, it does so. everybody can get home get yeah. some dinner going sit down in front of the computer Six for the, the east coasters it is yeah. it is works out good for us yeah. you know we're wrapping up our day but yep yeah. so uh, make sure you join us next week on Thursday 3 p.m. Pacific time 6 on the east coast um, Rod is going to take us through setting up his bow from start to finish. This one. Yep, this this very bow ray. Well, we have different limbs on it by this. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, so, I'll switch limbs. Yeah, Rod needs a little more poundage, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna help him out there. So I look forward to it. I look forward to joining you. We're gonna we're gonna let you take over control next week and, uh, and walk us through. <laughs> it'll, it'll be fun. Everybody, make sure you put in for that. Uh, oh my hunt. gosh, yes. Thanks for reminder, Rod. Yeah. Hunt seven seven four five three. I mean, I'm jealous. I know if I could, I would. I know it's uh, <laughs> it's great. I've I've never been. You know, I've hunted hunted elk here, so I think it's never had a guided hunt. So yeah, yeah, it's a it's a great opportunity to get out there and do that. So make sure you text that hunt to seven seven four five three. You'll get a uh, text with the link. Click the link. It'll take you over to that cool quiz we're doing. If not, make it you know just hop over to the Botech website. Click on the banner. You can do the exact same thing. So join us again next week. Thursday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and oh, yeah. Rod will have you a little more tech talk in here. So until next time, have fun and shoot straight. Thanks. Thank you. See you next week, See buddy. You peeps.